Hi guys, what's going on? Zura over here. I was just going over the European Championship games from today's round. And there are a couple of games that caught my attention. But the one that I want to share with you today led me to a couple of good discoveries. And uh, I hope you find it as fun as I did. And instructive <laughs> as well. Uh, all right, let's uh, jump into it. The game I'm talking about is Thomas Laurusus, Grandmaster from Lithuania, rated 25-71 against Andrei Esipenko, who has reached 2700 before. Right now, he is standing in 2680. Mm -hmm. We started with... Queen's Indian here, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3. However, game quickly transposed into semi-slav d5, knight c3, and c6. We have this triangle setup, uh, basically, uh, or diamond, <laughs> as some people like to call it. e3, knight b2, d7. e3 leads to more positional game here. We know bishop g5 uh, leads to sharper <laughs> trails. Uh, Botvinnik variation is probably one of the sharpest theoretical weapons out there. Uh, continues as follows, bishop h4, g5, knight takes g5, takes here, and it's a full-fledged two-sided fight. Basically, black has majority on the queen side, white has majority on the queen side, the king side. Okay, back to the game. E3 was played in the game. Knight B2, D7, Queen C2, Bishop D6. This is probably the first moment where white needs to make the choice which line to go with. Bishop E2 is a pretty popular choice. Bishop D3 is also a pretty popular choice. And <laughs> for romantic chess supporters, G4 is also pretty common. It was more common during Gary's time, like Gaspar Roy in two, two thousand era of two thousand probably. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, B three um, and short castle bishop e two slow <laughs> positional play is probably more popular. I would say at least after Sam Shanklin's course <laughs> on, on on this line. B six short castle. Bishop b7, bishop b2, queen e7, rook a to d1, rook a to d8, rook f to e1, rook f to e8. Pretty standard way of bringing pieces out for both sides. We are still following the main line here. And bishop f1 is another move that sh shows white's willingness to maintain the pressure what i mean by that is e4 was also possible here probably after he takes e4 or knight e4 for black would probably be slightly more precise there queen takes e4 bishop b4 attacking the rook and after rook e1 bishop d6 this is a standard way on the high level chess to uh, make a draw uh, basically um, white will repeat Rook f1, rook f e1, and then bishop b4, bishop back to d6. The reason for that is both sides does not have a good way of making progress here. Well, technically black is completely fine <laughs> with uh, equalizing, obviously. However, white does seem a little more active, but there will be knight f6 ideas, c5. So it won't be easy for white to make progress either. Bishop f1 was played here in the game. Still the main line. C5, D, uh, C takes D5. Now E takes D5. And we reached a very important pawn structure uh, in the position. In any kind of queen's gambit D4, D5 positions, these structures are absolutely huge. The structures I'm talking about is either hanging pawns or if c takes d4 happens then when black is left with isolated pawn understanding how to play with isolated pawn and against isolated pawn as well as hanging pawns and 
mix of those two because in a lot of cases those two are hand in hand go hand in hand there can be a lot of transpositions that happen either from hanging pawns to isolated or I would say vice versa if there is something traded next to an isolated pawn so <laughs> let's see how it worked out in this particular case here g3 was played in the game d takes c5 is also worth the attention here b takes c5 and then something like knight b5 probably bishop moves back or uh, going g3 afterwards um, very complicated position white normally tries to keep the isolated pawn blocked with the knight the knight is the ideal blockading piece however the side with the isolated pawn as we will see in the game six for the initiative and activity and all the pieces on the board helps that cause okay so logically that means that side that has isolated pawn wants to keep the pieces on the board they do not want to trade pieces because that would make their isolated pawn even weaker all right so g3 rook goes to c8 so white is trying to build the barricade basically against this bishop on the active diagonal here so this bishop will not be nearly as dangerous on that diagonal also white wants to bring the white squared bishop to this h3 c8 diagonal put the knight and potentially other pieces on that diagonal uncomfortable make them uncomfortable rook c8 bishop to h3 c takes d4 apparently we are still following the main line up to this point up c takes d4 game continued with knight takes d4 which is a very natural way of continuing to play here as i mentioned the knight is an ideal blockading piece and when there is isolated pawn this is a very standard situation so i do not blame white player here at all for taking knight d4 however looks like e takes d4 is probably less dangerous in this case for white queen d8 now bishop b4 is still a threat so probably something like queen d3 and white will maybe play knight d4 or uh, instead of queen d8 probably there was knight d4 immediately here move uh, something like queen d3 and then not sure exactly how black should continue here uh, with something like maybe queen d8 um, and computer apparently suggests moving this pawn to h6 i'm not sure why that is the case here uh, but we can agree that uh, it's still a very complex position however symmetrical structure okay so it should be more or less balanced and computer proves that it suggests that um, at the moment uh, it is equal actually it shows zeros in this position after e takes d4 however after knight takes d4 black plays this move bishop to b4 after which white will need to make only move to keep the balance and this only move is far from easy okay so this was the position that i was looking at actually when i saw another game a lot of people may have seen this game because it's a game from 2021 world cup that caught a lot of people's attention i would say because of its beauty let's see so that game continued with knight d to e2 okay this is the game between Mads Andersen, a grandmaster from Denmark, versus Herrera 
Pablo from Chile. <laughs> All right. Knight d e2. There was a pin on c file. So I think knight e2, if you have not analyzed this position, makes a lot of sense. However, it is already a mistake. What black is already much better after a move knight e4 because this brings additional firepower on the c3 well, knight there to make that pin even more dangerous. Also, I think there are some threats with queen f6. Well, I'm not sure actually about queen f6. There might be e4 knight hanging. However, there is a threat of knight takes f2 for sure. And that's what ended up happening. White plays a3 here to release the tension there <coughs> and falls for knight f2. Guess what was the only way to stay in the game here for white. This is absolutely crazy, okay? You can pause the video if you want and have fun with it. Now, let's move on with the move. It is queen takes e4. That is the only move. That knight is too dangerous, okay? That knight is too much. It poses too, too many threats there. So queen takes e4, eliminating that knight. And after pawn takes, rook takes d7 here, attacking the queen. Now queen will have to move away, then taking the bishop. That was three piece. However, black will get this two piece here after bishop takes c3. So queen takes c3. And we are left with the position queen versus bishop and the rook. However, pawn structure is very fixed on both sides, so I think uh, it will be almost impossible for black to win this. I would say most likely result is probably a draw. <laughs> now, let's go back to see what happened in the game after a3, knight takes f2. Now e3 pawn is loose, a takes b4, knight takes h3. Well, after knight h takes h3, it is clear that white's position is very close to being lost. Well, technically lost already. But at this point, after knight f2, <coughs> white's situation is already very tragic. Let's say if king takes f2, there will be queen takes e3. If king moves now on g2, now d4 check is the discovery <coughs> and bishop comes with the devastating, excuse me, queen f3 check and after king g1 there is bishop c5 leading to a checkmate pretty much because if you block it, rook takes e1 and then bishop takes d4 again with the checkmate. So after knight takes f2, white chooses to go with a takes b4, knight takes h3 check, king f1, queen takes e3, and queen to f5. Attacking two knights on h3 and on g1. All right, black says you can take that knight if you want and continues with knight f6, basically saying that Right now, priority is the king, and as, so, as far as you let me continue attacking, the material will not matter because your king is too weak and will get checkmated. White says, well, maybe not. Bishop c1, I will attack your queen again. Now, how does that queen continue to stay in the attack? f2 is covered with the queen here. There is no g1 because that is covered with the knight, right? Black goes knight g4. This is another very beautiful move in the game. Now, queen cannot be touched because after bishop e3, knight e3 is a checkmate. Pretty nice checkmate with two knights with king in the center of the board. Now, after knight g4, white says, okay, I'm going to go rook d3, try to bring more attackers to 
the queen. Now what? Okay, if queen goes back, then g4 knight is hanging. Well, queen e6, these two moves were available, and that was winning as well, <laughs> most likely, since uh, black was two pawns after and king is still weak. However, we are not showing this game for queen e6. You know, we are, we are better than that. <laughs> so after rook d3, white black continues with d4. Now this bishop joins the party here. Two knights, queen and bishop are all participating into the attack. Now h2 pawn weakness starts to become substantial because any check now to the king is a checkmate. So still queen cannot be captured. White decides to move away the rook now, so king can have the escape square on e1. But again, guys, I encourage you to pause the video here and find the checkmate yourself. We need to get control of the e1 square. Right now, what is blocking the e1 square? The only this knight, right? So how can we distract that knight? queen to g1 check considering all possible checks that's how we want to approach tactics consider all possible checks checks captures threats all right knight takes g1 knight takes h2 now leads to a very nice checkmate rook controls the e file bishop controls the g2 square this knight controls the f2 square and another knight checkmates the king <laughs> all right so this was the game actually the previous game that i wanted to show you i think a very fun position imagine playing that with black on the board at the world cup Whew. goosebumps right i know <laughs> um so now back to where we started okay after bishop b4 we saw that knight d to e2 knight d to d to e2 was played right in this game white plays bishop g2 which turns out to be also pretty bad all right the only correct move apparently in this position is f3 to cover e4 square because knight apparently comes on e4 with a devastating force very strong horsey on e4 f3 move however well for human if you do not know this move it's definitely not an easy move to make you are weakening your own king your own e3 pawn there probably what black play something like g6 here not to allow knight f5 and something like rook c1 a6 queen probably moves to either f2 here or d2 still very balanced position where computer yet again gives zero zeros the classic zero zeros all right so that would be the right way but bishop g2 was played into the game and now Andrei Esipenko unleashes here his preparation knight to don't quote me on that actually I'm not sure if that was a preparation or not because after knight d to b5 black goes into deep thought here to find the only winning move rook to c5 this is a, a soul-crushing move, <laughs> I would like to say. Black has now a lot of threats. Black wants to bring additional power here on the pin to c3 knight. a6 will kick the knight away. There had to be also precise calculation of what would happen in case of a3. I believe in case of a3, there is simply bishop takes c3, something like knight takes c3, and then rook goes to c8. Now, white will be forced 
to take on e4 here to get rid of this pin. And then d takes e4 now is again tragic for white because white has no light squared bishop in the game anymore. And this knight on e5 will be unstoppable. And comes to f3, rook will sw swing to h5, game over. All right, so strategically game would have been over. So after rook c5, white here decided to complicate the matters a little bit with bishop takes e4, d takes e4, and knight to d6, attacking the rook and the bishop on b7. However, Andrei Esipenko's cold-blooded answer here, knight e5, simply giving up an exchange and understanding that white squares right now will be decisive. This knight on f3 will land with the crashing force, okay? a3 was played in the game, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, and the precise queen to c8. Using this pin on the c file right now to threaten knight f3, rook h5, and queen h3 immediate checkmate, immediate combo, okay? Going for the throat. Queen b2 was played in the game here, knight f3, king g2, and now c3 bishop might look like it's hanging, but if rook takes c3, there will be queen c3, and our last rank is unprotected, all right? So it's never too late to blunder, all right? Rook c3 would be a blunder, but Esipenko had the different idea here, rook h5. Now rook swings to the fifth rank, and this is too much to handle for the lone king. Now, three piece, three black piece, rook, queen, and the knight. Two out of these three are major pieces, heavy pieces, all right? And one minor piece, all alone <laughs> versus the king. That king is doomed. There is no way it can survive. Also, it's important to mention that king cannot run away from f1 because there will be bishop a6. So this bishop is doing its job from b7 as well, by the way, all right? So after rook h5, h4 was played, knight takes h4, g takes h4, and calm and composed, rook takes h4. Not starting with checks like queen g4 and then uh, bishop a6, which is probably also winning, okay? That move order should also win, I think, something like that, and then probably bishop d3 to block this checkmate threat and then rook h4 should be a checkmate. However, I love the composed move here. Rook takes h4, threatening queen g4 checkmate, queen g4, rook h1 checkmate. No defense. You go rook g1, uh, there is que queen h3 checkmate. All right. Oh, by the way, queen h3 immediately and queen h1 is also a checkmate threat. f3, queen h3, and then these two monsters, queen h2, queen h1 check, another rook to um, h2 should be a checkmate. <laughs> White decides to play rook d8, simply give the extra rook back to save the checkmate, but after queen d8, now material is equal and attack continues. So. Uh, Thomas Larus was here, decided to go down in style and allow the checkmate after rook h1, queen g4 checkmate, check, bishop g3, queen f3 check, king goes to g1, rook takes h1, checkmate. All right, let's sum it up here. I was very amazed to see that from unclear position, this is move 15 and we would probably say or any chess player here when they see the position first oh this looks very complicated this is totally unclear from unclear to in the matter of couple of moves here how many moves was that so rook c8 that was so one move the knight before bishop b4 was two moves bishop g2 Knight e4, three moves, knight d2, b5, rook c5, four moves. From unclear to a very difficult situation in uh, two very high level games. 
Do not forget, these were games between two strong grandmasters in a classical time control in both cases on very important tournaments. All right? One was after, yeah, after, in, in, in four moves here after Rook C5, Black takes the lead and never let it go until the end of the game. And in, other, in another game that we saw, there was Knight D2, Knight E4, A3, Knight F2. This was in two moves, not even four moves. The other one was four moves. This was two moves. Game pretty much ended, okay? Not quite ended. Uh, but got white into very difficult situation and the dream scenario for black, right? In, in both cases, managed to create a, a beautiful miniature. Well, second one is probably not, wouldn't be called miniature, but uh, on a high level, winning with the fourth sequence from move 20, I think is already considered uh, a pretty good outcome. All right, I had a lot of fun analyzing this myself. I hope you enjoy and find it helpful. It's not, it's not too difficult. You see, this was uh, two green masters, probably black side in both cases were more prepared than white, <laughs> but they cut their opponents and never let go. All right, cheers. I'll see you on the next one.